Here with me now with the political implications, Fox News political contributor Tammy Bruce, Independent Women's Voice President. Congratulations on that new announcement. Shelby Holiday, Wall Street Journal senior video reporter, and Gail Trotter, attorney and a contributor at The Hill. Ladies, let's start in the studio. Tammy, here's my point. The steel industry, 1953, had 650,000 workers. 2016, 139,000. President Trump won the Rust Belt by promising to take action like the actions done today. And yet we see the market falling apart. We hear Paul Ryan, the business roundtable. Everyone's complaining. And it feels to me like this is establishment pushback against a promise to the, to the heartland. Well, it, it is. And, and a lot of the, what the president's done, including the tax cuts and wanting, of course, to repeal and replace Obamacare, the establishment pushed back against that uh, and complained about the potentially negative impact of what the president wants to do. But without uh, exception, everything he's done, he's been right. His instinct has been right. So his commitment was to American jobs, the forgotten individual, and, and, and the Rust Belt, if you will. At the same time, he's also talked about, of course, national security. And that's been a big argument within this as well, that we, in fact, if the world is moving sure. toward war, we need to be more in control of those industries in particular, less reliant on, uh, well, China uh, and even South America, but every other nation. We've got to be self-sufficient, and this moves us to that point. Of course, uh, Tammy's referring to the, uh, to the um, Trade Extension Act, 1962, right. the Section 230. The rule he's using, the right. The rule of national defense. But also, in the end, the steel industry says you can apply to that as well. We're going to spend trillions in infrastructure. Maybe some of it should be spent with uh, here. And also, we should have a healthy and competitive uh, industry, a global industry. What do you make of it? Well, I don't disagree with the fact that he's following through on a promise. But I think the problem politically here is there's so much confusion surrounding the announcement. We didn't know if it was coming this week, next week. Uh, there was some confusion about what the numbers would be. He was presented three options. He ultimately chose the toughest option, the strongest option. Uh, but until this decision is actually made and set in stone, I think you'll continue to see confusion and swings in the market. Investors are obviously worried. Even some of these manufacturers in the U.S. are a little bit worried about what it would do to input prices and also the risk of retaliation. So politically, it is following through on a promise. It's also causing a whole lot of chaos that didn't need to be caused. Well, I, you know, again, you know, I, I heard that too, uh, Gail, that uh, it felt like it was off the cuff or whatever. But this is a promise made back uh, now going back almost two years. Uh, there have been hints about it for a long time. And there was some telegraphing that there was friction within the White House. You know, the more establishment types like Gary Cohn from Wall Street was certainly against this. But Peter Navarro, Wilbur Ross said, listen, we've got to do it. So despite how it was de developed or, or presented to the American public, it's out there now. And, and you've got two camps. You've got workers who lost their jobs in the manufacturing sector who are applauding this. And you have people on Wall Street who are saying, no, it's a bad move. That's right. There's, it's a fulfillment of a campaign promise that President made. It's yet another example of where he, as candidate Trump, said he was going to do something. And now, as President Trump, he is going to do something. And I think your point, Charles, is that there could be an oversimplification of this debate in that some people are saying tariffs are bad, free trade is good. But the Trump administration clearly is saying that our trade partners are not treating us fairly here. And uh, he's going to take these bold steps to implement his economic policy of putting America first. And this is a major step. And of course, there are concerns that there could be retaliation or that the benefits of this could flow disproportionately to the steel industry. But it's something that gives him the ability to tell the American people that he has actually taken action on their behalf. Let's talk about that uh, retaliation for a moment, OK? Uh, China, uh, their, their, their debt now is at $29 trillion, uh, up from $6 trillion in the last 10 years. That's 260 percent of their GDP. Shelby. I don't have to tell you, uh, they're in a pretty precarious situation. I don't know how people can have it both ways saying, well, it's just a small sliver of exports. They're a number, two, number 11 official exporter. Mm -hmm. They export more to us through China, Mexico and other areas. But if it's so small for us and it shouldn't be a big deal, is it, is it so big for them that they would actually engage in a trade war? I think the bigger concerns are actually with, re with respect to our close allies like Canada, which imports more of our steel than any other country, and also... Uh, you have Japan, you have Canada, you have Brazil. But I, there's certainly the fear of retaliation and what it would mean, not just for imports, but for, for exports, but for prices. Um, I also just think politically, you got to wonder, does this move come because pres the president, Trump, president is moderating a bit more on guns and he knows his base won't be so happy with that? So, boom, what can I deliver to my base? Right. Or is it something that was well, calculated? Again, it does no, this feel is like it came no, out that, of nowhere. This was a, it didn't come out of nowhere. No, I mean, no but I think, I think that, that the fear of retaliation is tied to that, because if this were 
forecast and expected and smooth and okay. it was rolled out as one, planned. One second, let me read uh, a statement from Canada. I'll let you get in. And, I, and yeah. maybe, guys, I don't know if we have any, any tape of President Trump on the campaign trail promising uh, this kind of action, but we did hear from Canada. It is entirely inappropriate to view any trade with Canada as a national security threat to the United States. We will always stand up for Canadian workers and Canadian businesses. Should restrictions be imposed on Canadian steel and aluminum products, Canada will take responsive measures to defend its trade interests and workers. Uh, out right before we came on there, Alcoa put out a statement. Alcoa, of course, would benefit from this in certain ways, but they did also ask that whatever the White House does, they carve out Canada, saying that Canada has not abused the system. So there's a good chance that this could be a moot argument. Well, because this is not final yet. Uh, they're going to be listening. This is, in a way, a kind of a trial balloon to see what everyone else would say and do. Uh, so Canada is making its noise. Alcoa says what it wants to do. But I'll remind everyone uh, of all the, 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 the noise about the damage Trump is going to do. And remember when he went uh, to Oslo and it was, uh, you know, the, 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 the global meeting and people were going to reject him. He was going to be hated. He was greeted like a rock star. The world knows that a strong economic America means a stronger rest of the world. And and at least, the, at least when it comes to retaliation, they're worried about agriculture, as an example. China, it's 2% of an import here versus Canada, 16%. But then it comes down to the other industry of something like agriculture. These are things that will have to be managed. But the fact of the matter is, it was never America alone. It was right. America first. Right. And that ultimately has to manifest in trade in some way. Gail, uh, you know, of course, uh, when you start talking Canada and Mexico, let's not forget that at the same time, we're in the last phase of renegotiations on NAFTA. So... That, that's playing a role in this as well. But again, uh, you know, if we don't have the political guts to at least push back now and against the lowest hanging fruit, cheap steel being dumped, then how exactly. could we ever stand up for things like intellectual property? I agree with what Tammy said, and I want to add that you have an excellent point, Charles, that these actions do not occur in a vacuum. Exactly. So we're talking about having tariffs on steel and aluminum, but when we talk about that, that's in the context of a global economy. And this kind of a bold move has implications for the entire economic policy and not just these two industries. All right, ladies. Thank it you. actually began with solar panels. Yeah. And yeah. washing machines. Yeah.